Welcome back to Ice Time TV and part two of our interview with the uh, the father of Cardiff Devils ice hockey, John Lawless. And John, thanks for staying with me and putting up with uh, all my old stories. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, we left it when uh, the Devils were, well, champions of British ice hockey. You just won the, the league title and the, uh, the playoffs in dramatic uh, fashion uh, four years into existence. But I guess you were faced with a with a major challenge that summer when uh, the Cooper brothers decided to uh, to go back home and uh, and play for the Durham Wasps. Yeah, um, and and rightly so. Their contract was for two years. They were um, able to uh, negotiate uh, a deal with Durham, and uh, uh, we were uh, looking then to um, get some strength and 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 try to fill that void mm -hmm. with some quality British players. You uh, you look to fill maybe maybe two uh, two roles with, with four good quality Brits, uh, yeah. Paul Heavey, Derek King, Neil Brown, Peter Smith came in and yeah. uh, all great names in their, their own right. It was uh, a pretty successful season, you finished second, but I suppose the highlight was going to Europe for the first time and, and, and winning that first game against the, uh, the Danish side and uh, yeah. representing Britain uh, very proudly. Yeah, I don't think a team had uh, won at that level no. from Britain before, so to Accomplish that was amazing, and, and that was one of the uh, uh, the more memorable achievements. Um, there, there was quite a few, but that was a big one because that was the first British team uh, to go and play. And I think we were playing against two ex-Soviet mm. leagues, so it would have been the the uh, old CIS league. Yeah. And uh, um, I said to the guys, which, which was amazing, and they bought in. Uh, I said at the start of it, if you guys think you can play against these guys, forget it. I want you to get the puck and get it out. Yeah. And they're going, okay, coach. <laughs> yep. And I had a, a a third line of just British young British yeah. guys. Right. They got the puck. They iced it. And the whistle went, and they'd come off, and we tap them on the shins yeah. and say, "Good shift." Job done. And they're going, well, okay. And so anyway, we had guys on that team that can score at any level in the world yeah given a two-on-one yeah and then all of a sudden the, the the teams that we were playing they got a little frustrated and they got a little lackadaisical and all of a sudden we'd have a two-on-one with uh, say doug McEwen coming yeah. down and uh, whoever else was there uh, uh yeah. and then we'd score yeah and then we'd go right back to that defensive shell get the puck get it out yeah um and uh we frustrated them you could probably get away with it for one game if yeah. the team's not ready. And we did it for, yeah. like, against two ex-Soviet uh, 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 club sites. And uh, uh, it, it was just amazing to get to that level. Um, and I guess the other thing that stood out from that was uh, when Stevie Lyle... Well, you're jumping ahead because that's 94, 95, and that's my big finale because that's the, that's the most memorable... Uh, oh, that one, I see. Yeah. There, I told you. You played memory. in Europe a couple of times. Oh, yeah. You won a few trophies here, John. Actually, yeah. The fir We did win the first you time. You played in... the, the Danish team. I think oh, it was 11-8. Yeah. 11-8 yeah. we won. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm jumping that's ahead. That's all right. And, uh, but that was our, again, the yeah, first the time. the first that, time. The first time club. that we, we won on that level. Yeah. And and that was an achievement in itself. Um, and yeah, it was against uh, Roderve or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eleven eight, and uh, that was the I think that was the home side. It was eight. lost to the Polish side, yeah. and uh, I don't know who the other team that I we. I forget. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, sorry, I jumped ahead. Maybe That's you can right. edit that. Well, it would be fine. <laughs> sort it. It's okay. It's been a while, so. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Um, I remember at the end of that year, the, 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 the Wembley Championship, the trophy was, was lost. You lost to Peterborough in the, uh, the semi-final. Yeah. Uh, Paul Farmer had been coach, but had, had left halfway through the season. I think you probably felt you were doing a little bit too much at the moment. You were still an integral player. You were trying to coach. You were, I remember there was a time you were in the penalty box that night against Peterborough at Wembley, and you couldn't get messages to the bench. And yeah. That must have been a hard one to lose out. Yeah, it was, because it was good to see uh, my old club uh, uh, continue on and 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 develop and and uh, get to that level, but it was still frustrating to lose to any club. Yeah. Uh, especially the, we won it the previous year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we realized that okay, nothing is assured, nothing's a given. We got to go back to the the drawing board and try to improve for next year. Absolutely. It was. Uh, it, it took a couple of years for the glory days to come back. That that 91-92 season was a little difficult. You brought in John Griffiths as as, as bench coach and. Uh, uh, maybe had some different ideas and, and some of the Brits didn't get a, a, a whole lot of ice time and of course it was the famous night when the Devils lost 13-0 to Durham. That was I suppose just a learning experience that season. 
Yeah, it was like again a, a, a learning curve where it's not a given. You, you, it's it's something that you have to to earn um, and something you have to work hard for to to get to that level and the championship level. And uh, uh, luckily, we were able to to bounce back and learn from those experiences. You certainly will, and we'll uh, we'll move straight on to ninety two, ninety three, the uh, the Grand Slam year. But uh, you got the Coopers back, which was uh, which was a great signing, but. Um, your first two imports to replace uh, uh, Steve Morrier, and I think there was a, a, an opportunity for another reclassified player. You brought in Brad Gratton and Trent Anderson, both you know two good pros and, and, and lovely gentlemen in their own right. Didn't quite work out in Cardiff for them. No, no, it, it didn't. Um, and um, I think at the time where when I was recruiting, I could pretty much say, okay, what are his stats at the level that he played at? they're pretty good he'll do well over here mm. but the the british game was improving mm -hmm. so much so there was more way more than recruiting uh than just their stats and the the league that they played in um there were the the most important things the character of the players mm -hmm. nothing against those two but yeah. um there th there was more into it as far as getting a quality import uh in the past yes i was lucky to see uh, Steve Moria yeah. adjust and adapt and play well in Britain. So I said, yes, that's the type of player I want. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, um, sort of uh, the benefit of actually seeing yeah. the guy play. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, uh, they didn't stick around too long, but you got uh, two pretty good replacements in Steve Kajir and, uh, and Hilton Ruggles. And mm -hmm. uh, with those two, the Coopers back, of course, the second line of, of Doug McHugh and Jason Stone and Nicky Chin, uh, you know, youth development coming through in Cardiff, which I knew was very important to you. Yeah, it was huge. That was a lot of depth on that team. Yeah, it was. And, it, and you, like I say, you've got th those type of players, um, Ruggles and uh, Dumas, like they, mm -hmm. they can score on anybody mm -hmm. at any level and uh, they're they're sneaky good and uh, they uh, they were good character guys too so uh, but I think you know getting getting all the ingredients for a team um, but at that level it, it was important to have uh, quality British players yeah. as, as much as anything. How important was it to you that youth development because there were some great names that came out. you've already mentioned Stevie Lyle but initially there was Chin, Stone, I remember Paul Cousins, Lee Cowmeadow, Lee Carson came through. Amazing. There was there was a, a production line of Cardiff youngsters. Yeah and it, and it was a good transition too because we would it wouldn't be a case of uh, uh, say a guy was making his debut it wouldn't be a case like he hasn't been around us for, mm. uh, just for one day. He's been training with us, and we've been nurturing them in to that system. It's always going to be a little nerve-wracking for a player to make their debut, but they were part of us for a longer period, and, and to see their development and encourage them, and and um, you know when when things don't go their way, just to be there for them. It, it was a, it was awesome because. Um, that's, that was so important to have uh, a good youth development, mm -hmm. and, which our imports got heavily involved with, and uh, it gives us that depth that we, we so needed. Was that one of the things you were looking for in your imports, that they, <coughs> they, would, they wouldn't just turn up to the rink, play and go home, they were part of yeah. the, maybe the legacy in Cardiff? It was, and they enjoyed it. You know, uh, it, it was something that they knew that they had to do, and they did it, and uh, it, it didn't take long, but they were taught by somebody so it was nice for to see them give back to uh, the development of the sport and uh, I never had any issues with the imports going oh I don't want to mm. train these kids you know yeah. it's not in my contract mm. and they, they they did it with uh, you know with with pride that 92 93 season uh, you won coach of the year it was your first uh, year standing on the bench you came back a few times I remember Paul Ferguson mm -hmm. saying you retired more times than Frank Sinatra but mm -hmm. uh, you were on the bench that year how, how much of a uh, an adjustment was it for you going from the you know number nine on the ice scoring the big goals to, to being the guy on the bench yeah it was a transition um, but uh, I, I believe that being the manager also helped because uh, I was the guy that signed you so uh not the coach yep. but i'm also the coach mm -hmm. so they they had no sort of uh uh recourse to say well well i don't like the coach well do you like the manager that signed you because he's the same guy so play for me yeah and, and, and it, it was they just bought in and they realized it and that might have been kind of the the a little bit of the conversation i had with them by signing them because i i would say well 
I'm the coach too, yeah. and this is what I am. This is who I am, and I expect and uh, demand this out of you. And more times than not, I, I didn't have to because yeah. they were they were uh, demanding of themselves. I was going to ask you though, because you know, as a kid growing up, you know, you were one of my favorite players. You'd sign my autographs. You were always the lovely guy with the big smile shooting the scoreboard. How ruthless could you be in that locker room? Pretty bad, yeah. And it was something that I wasn't really proud of, but it was something that was more natural. I wasn't. It wasn't a case. Well, oh, shit, you better. Lawless is going to lose it. Yeah. Uh, it was just something that came that I felt at the time that they needed more, and they they weren't fooling me. And it wasn't a case of to try to get them to play better. I'm going to lose it. Um, uh, but uh, uh, for the most part, um, I. Uh, I I think the players responded well, you yeah. know, if, for the most part. You uh, you reclaimed that league trophy and, uh, of course, went to Wembley, beating uh, Murfield 9-0 on the Friday night and then beating Humberside in the, in the final to win the Grand Slam. Just capped off a, a very, very special year. Yeah, that was uh, um, a little easier in the playoffs than the, yeah. in, than the previous one. Um, but, yeah, we were a pretty solid team there and a formidable uh, club at that level. And uh, we move on to 93-94. To Only one uh, or two departures. Derek King went back to Scotland because Lee Carson had come through the ranks and, and Steve Kajir left the club to be replaced by, well, along with Steve Moria, probably the best import to play in this country, Rick Brabant. Yeah. And, um, again, another formidable team you recruited, another experience to Europe. It wasn't the one where you qualified against the two Russian teams. It was the uh, European experience where you had to change hotels mid, uh, midnight, I think, because uh, of cockroaches and all things bad. Oh, yeah, the standard there wasn't... Uh wasn't too good. I think there was actually a dead body in the There was, wasn't in, there? Yeah. In the foyer. Yeah. yeah. When we got there. That's yeah. not the best welcome, is it? No. 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 So, yeah, but again, all a good experience. And uh, I kind of look back at it uh, when uh, in, in my childhood that a few uh, Canadian teams that went over to Russia and had that experience and had that sort of, uh, you know, that Canada Russia sort of rivalry. Um, I took that on board as that, that was mine. Yeah. You know, this, okay, you know, we're, we've got to compete. Uh, they're not expecting us to, to do well, and we totally respect the level that they mm -hmm. were playing at. So, yeah, a good experience. It was. I remember Hilton Ruggles finished, I think, top goal scorer in that competition. And uh, in terms of the league, you, you dominated, but it was perhaps the first season that the, the Sheffield Steelers were in the Premier Division. Did you start to see that they were with their arena, the eight thousand people there? Oh, yeah. They were starting. They were going to come of force. Oh yeah, big time. No question about it. Because one of the uh, things that attracted me to to Cardiff was uh, a starting from scratch, having a new facility, being able to build it up, and then then Sheffield comes along, and you go, okay, well their facility is a lot yeah. uh, better than ours, and uh, they have a lot more power to do what we just did. And uh, obviously, that they were, they were always uh, a threat early on, and have continued to be a, a, a powerhouse in the British game. They have. They've been the dominant force for for 20 plus years. But uh, that first season, there was a happy memory. There was that Wembley final uh, with the 12-1 scoreline, and uh, just everything clicked that day. And uh, it was a great way to retain the trophy. Yeah, and it was. We had an input uh, from a lot of the British yep. kids, right? Um, I remember seeing, I guess it was Richard Townsend. Yeah, scoring. the Welsh goal, the 12th yeah, goal, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, all in all, a well-balanced team, well-balanced uh, uh, performance, and a uh, great way to end the year. Um, that summer, again, you had to make a, a, a couple of changes. Rick Brabant left. You brought in uh, Claude Dumas. Uh, you were looking to play a little bit more three-line hockey, as you say, with the, with the youngsters. Um, and we come to it. You touched upon it earlier, that, that European expedition where you became the... The, the only or the first team to qualify for the second stage of the European yeah. Cup. Uh, yeah. Losing to Tilburg, but beating two uh, Russian sides. Was it Sol called Kiev? And uh, I forget the name of the other one, but that was a that was a Kamagorsk pretty, or something. Say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, those teams are still playing, and they were playing at the highest level in uh, in uh, the, the Soviet League at the time. Um, but this 14-year-old yeah, kid in goal, this, this was the story. Stevie Lyle, <coughs> you know, Jason Wood had been your go-to guy. He was a fantastic netminder. But this 14-year-old school kid from St. Mellon's, you're, yeah. you're taken away, and he ends up being player of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, prior to leaving to uh, go over to Holland, um, we had an optional skate, and I had, I guess, about five guys show up. And all, it was pretty much all the imports and Stevie Lyle. Yeah. So we went in there, and we were just basically doing a shootout against him. And 
and and everything was going in. Every, yeah. Like we got do mass coming down. Yeah. Q and like this. There, everything was going in, and Stevie was getting frustrated. And I said, I said Stevie, you're starting. And I told him that at the practice. I said you're wow. starting on. And he goes, well, he looked at me and, he, and I go, yeah, I said, you're a stand-up goalie. And uh, from my recollection, recollection, the the Russians, yeah. uh, they like to pass, pass, pass and shoot when there's an open net. They like to deke you out and pass. Yeah, pass. Yeah. And uh, they they had the, the skill and ability to do that. And so I said, they don't know how old you are. They don't know your experience. Yeah. They just look at us as a, as, you know, this makeup team from from Britain, they're yeah. gonna they're, they're gonna think they're gonna walk all over us. But you're a stand-up goalie. They're gonna come down. They're gonna look at you. They're gonna pass to the other guy. If I get the defenseman to make sure that pass is not yeah. there, they'll shoot and you'll make the save. Just just, just do your game. Yeah. And uh, that that was amazing. Um, and going back to where we got the puck out. Yeah. Where, not that just Stevie Lau played uh, so well that um, um, that the other players bought into mm -hmm. it. And uh, it was just a great feeling. And we had a good support there. I think huge. we probably yep. had about 300 people yep. that made that trip. And they, they loved it. And it was it was amazing to be a part of. Well, um, it was the club was only nine years in existence that side. You'd won three league trophies, uh, three Wembleys. You just qualified for the, the, the European Cup second round. Yep. There's not much more you can do in a pretty much a decade of hockey at one club, is there? It was it was amazing. Uh, it'd be a part of. I remember going back to that uh, uh, European uh, sort of success in that uh, in Holland. Um, the, the players on the other teams, you could see that they they were after the tournament. They're coming up to me and they're yeah. they're trying to say, you know, you can almost see, can we can you recruit me? Kind of, <laughs> I want to get out of here. I yeah. want to play for you. Right? Yeah. And then the Russian coach comes over to me, right, and he goes, "You good coach, right?" And I go, <laughs> "Thanks, man. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Probably." And uh, it was some, those sort of things yeah. just stick with you. And I go, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a that was an amazing season, capped off by a heartbreaking yet memorable game at, uh, at Wembley. Your last game in charge of the Cardiff Devils, yeah. Sheffield Steelers, a, a, a six-all uh -huh. encounter that went to penalty shots. I remember Ian Cooper was was injured because he'd been on GV duty. So you had Patrick Scott in the lineup, and yeah. uh, penalty shots weren't kind that day. No, they weren't, and it was it was a tough way uh, to lose, but we have won that way. So you, you got to take the good with the bad, and. Uh, um, it was it was very uh, uh, sort of a big letdown um, at, at the end and just going oh geez coulda shoulda woulda yeah. so close um, and coming out of the uh, the press room this well guy, this is it this is this is Manchester this is just, they, they they scouted you at Wembley it was just crazy I'm down I'm out and this guy comes up in a suit and he he's tired I think he's another reporter or whatever yeah. and he goes uh, I think his name was Brian Ecclesley, yes. isn't it, right? And he says, I'm from Manchester and uh, we're looking to see if you're interested in coming uh, yeah. to form the team. And I'm just going, hello. <laughs> um, and having that opportunity, A, first to go to Peterborough. Yeah. And pretty much, I wasn't uh, on hands, but I was with the club for the first year and see them grow for four years. To be on hands from, from day one in Cardiff and be yeah. there for nine years. And then just have this opportunity with a, you know, um, a 17,000 seat rink and, and being able to start yeah. another club again from scratch. Uh, I said, okay, well, let's talk. Yeah. And uh, um, I guess within the next month or two, things were finalized yeah. and yeah, it was, it was so freaky and, and you go, everything happens for a reason. Um, and I just couldn't believe it that, okay, I'm so down that, uh, so I think he got me at a good time, yep. right? Because I go, it kind of picked me up and I go, oh, hey, hey, maybe, maybe this, let's maybe got another nine years in Manchester well, or did, whatever. Did you feel at that time you had taken the Devils as far as you could? Because you had Sheffield with an 8,000 seater arena, you had the MEN coming on board with a, a 17,000 arena. Obviously the Devils were at the top of their game, yeah. but did you feel that that might've been the pinnacle of where you took them? Yeah. It, 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 Probably subconsciously, um, uh, but I, when you look at what Sheffield were doing, and yeah. then you go, okay, so Manchester's even bigger. Yeah, I'm going, okay, it, it's not a given, and it wasn't, but it was a, a, a pretty good ingredient to to start a, a, a club and a franchise up. So um, 
I don't think I looked at it as far as why the, I can't take these guys any further, but I'm sure that that pro played yeah. my mind subconsciously. Obviously, completely understand the opportunity of, of going to Manchester, 17,000 seats, a hotbed of, of, of sport in that area, and that you had great success in, in the first division uh, title. But I remember you appearing on, appearing on Wales today with the, the late great Bob Humphreys, the day you had to hand in your resignation. That, that must have been a tough day for you. Yeah, it, it was. I had to go down to, I guess, the, uh, the, the chairman, as Temi at the yeah. time, and drive down. And, um, you know, he was uh, okay with it and a little bit shocked, but at the same time, it, it gave him a free reign. Yeah. Then he could get some new, new blood, and maybe mm -hmm. the, the, the club needed that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got him to, to a level, we, we, and it was, they did very well after I was gone. Yep. And so it wasn't a case of, uh, we, we had all the, you know, the right ingredients in place for it to uh, continue to be successful and, and grow. So, um, and I think it was maybe the next year or the year after they wanted again. Well, I was going to say, it was, uh, jumping ahead, it was 96, 97, the Devils' last league title, uh, the old uh, Super League, it's its first year. You were actually on the bench that night for Manchester, the Devil, night the Devils won it. That must have been a bit surreal for you. It, it was pretty weird. Um, but we, at least we gave him a game. We, yeah, I think we lost three to two or something. But it was one of those games where um, I, you wish you could play at a level, um, but I couldn't play. I was coaching, yeah. and I couldn't play at that level anymore. And um, they were a better side. Yeah. We gave them a good game, and they were well-deserved uh, uh, to, to win the league. It was that night yeah. uh, against us. and. Uh, and there was a, it was a double-edged sword in a sense because I go, oh my God, these guys are hmm. these guys are really good. These yeah. are still good. This club is really good, and uh, I'm so proud to be a part of all that development and just to to see how good they are. 30 years later from the, the day we started. Absolutely. Just a, you know, a couple of final questions. Did Super League catch you a little bit by surprise? You had great success the first year with Manchester. Obviously that second season was a, was a little difficult. Did it catch you by surprise? And, and were you felt a little hard done by when Manchester let you go at the end of that season? Well, no, it didn't. I, I, got, I was caught off guard because um, the I was told by one of the directors of the Super League, so maybe I got some mm, sort of wrong information, yeah. definitely wrong, that there was going to be five imports and unlimited dual nationals. Right. So I went out and signed yeah. all these yeah. good players that were dual nationals yeah. because I thought, might as well get them before everybody yeah, else yeah, does. Yeah. I'll get my imports when... Yeah, yeah. You know, I, so Jeff so Lindsay, people like that. I, got, and, I, yeah. I, I signed... They were all... They were all uh, uh, Imports, yeah. but they were most of them were dual nationals. Yeah. Then when I I found out a month later after I signed everybody yeah. that it was going to be unlimited or yeah. whatever the amount was twelve, and I go oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I, I was a little bit misinformed. Uh, was I um, disappointed or felt let down by Manchester? No, because I I had a three year guaranteed contract. Yeah, and I only went up there with a with a three year absolutely guaranteed mm -hmm. contract. So I got paid for three years yeah. for doing two. Yeah. And then halfway through that, or even a third into that year, I went to Telford. Telford they, yeah. they contacted me, and it was I was able to call my own shots a little bit once I left uh, Cardiff um, by saying, "Well, this uh, this is what I want." Yeah. And they gave it to me. Yeah. And I wasn't wasn't extortionate. It wasn't a crazy amount, but it was it was reasonable. Um, and so I got paid for three years. Uh, for working for two, mm -hmm. which isn't it's a no, pretty good back. gig. Yeah. And uh, then uh, when Telford contacted me, I said, well, you know what? I was on this in Manchester, mm -hmm. so I'd need to be at least on that if yeah. you guys want me. And if you're all what you say you're going to be, yeah. well, you can afford it because it's just one salary. Yeah. That, and uh, it's an important one. Mm -hmm. So they gave it to me. Mm -hmm. And I know they, uh, they struggled and went into uh, a sort of receivership while I was there. But I got half my wages up front. Yeah. But before going to Telford. Well, that helps. So I, you're I, always so a good negotiator. I just go, oh, no, <laughs> you guys saying that? I said, well, give me. Yeah. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was a great experience, and I, I don't think I had that confidence or was able to do that initially. But then the confidence at Cardiff uh, and the experience that I got in Cardiff was enabled me to accept that yes well you got you got sacked in manchester yeah, yeah. well that's part of it i've had to sack some people and i get it change yeah. the direction uh able to negotiate 
security when I went to Telford. Yeah. Uh, rather than just say, okay, yeah, where do I sign? Yeah. And so it was it, all in all a, a good good experience. Loads of memories. I bet. Uh, and and Cardiff's always dear to my heart. Uh, as a guy that um, signed the Coopers and brought through all those British youngsters, though. How do you look back at Super League now? Is it it was great quality hockey, but was it of detriment to the British game? Do you think? Uh, it's not really for me to uh, judge that. I I would, I do like to see British development yeah. more, um, and I don't know how they can get back to that. Yeah. I, I I really don't. Um, I was out practice uh, yesterday yeah. and watched these guys. Un freaking believable. Yeah. Like the skill level the speed, the strength, at all, all the players. Yeah. And it, it's just amazing. They're, they're a hundred percent pro. Like yeah. it, it, their, their, their attitudes, their respect for the game, uh, and their ability, it, it, it's, it's real professional. And it was, uh, it was awesome to watch at ice level. Yeah. And I was going, okay. And my, my impression was they, they are all so good. I go, any one of them could have been yeah. better than a Moria yes. or this. But at the time, Moria was, the guy. I believe, he was the best import. Yeah. Now, if Moria was playing in today's game, maybe Simo had a vision of this game. Yeah, he was amazing. He um, these guys have more skill, more speed, more strength. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a pleasure to watch. But I'd, I'd still like to see that. Uh, I'd like to see that yeah. skill level. But I'd like to see more British... The guys involved just finally jonks i know we've got about two minutes left on the uh, the tape i've kept you too long but uh 30 years tonight you were there for the first nine Amazing. you're the father of this club you know who are the guys in the in the locker room you remember and and you know what are the the couple of special memories that you take with you well there's just so many memories and just to to be involved with those players for them to have the memories yeah. all the players that have ever put a, a cardiff devil jersey on for them to have the, those memories you know they last a lifetime um too many <laughs> too many i don't cry no but i think you deserve to john we will leave that on behalf of myself because you've given me 30 years of uh of pleasure on behalf of every cardiff devils fan uh we owe you a huge thanks thank john you. lawless thank you very much appreciate it